I'd, I'd like to welcome everyone to your conference. And my name is Keith Dobson, and I'm a professor of clinical psychology at the University of Calgary in Canada. And currently, I'm also involved in two different organizations. I'm the president of the Academy of Cognitive Therapy, which is a credentialing organization for cognitive therapists worldwide. And I'm also the president of the International Association for Cognitive Psychotherapy. So in addition to my research, and I'm a department chair in my university and so on, I have these roles as well. We are very pleased, and thank you for talking with us. My pleasure. Thank you. work uh, has been over the last number of years in the area of depression and so we're very interested in the problem of clinical depression and uh, over the years I've come to the opinion that the treatment of acute phase depression is very important obviously for patients well-being but from a public health perspective that we probably can have as much impact or more perhaps by also focusing on relapse prevention. So a lot of my research of late has been focused on issues related to the uh, the risk factors for relapse in, in the context of clinical depression and efficacious methods to reduce risk of relapse using primarily cognitive behavior therapy. Yes, well we actually have two different lines of research. Again, one is laboratory-based research. So we have a paradigm that we've been using quite a bit where we use recovered depressed patients and we do induction procedures to see if we can elicit certain kinds of thinking styles that might be predictive of relapse. And then we're looking at the long-term results. And we have a paper that was published in Behavior Research and Therapy in 2009. And we have another one in Press and Journal of Affective Disorders looking at that, that particular issue. Um, we also have been doing some work um, in the area of, of, again, reducing risk of relapse through interventions. And so many people may know about mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, which is a, a recent development in the field still. And uh, we've just finished a trial. I was involved in, in Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran, comparing mindfulness-based cognitive therapy to a more standard cognitive behavior therapy prevention program for depression. And that one is just in review now. But I knew you were going to ask this question. And <laughs> honestly, this is one of the most difficult questions, I think, mm -hmm. to, to try to ever anticipate where our field is going. The field of cognitive behavior therapy has grown so much in the last decade that it's uh, almost impossible in some ways to imagine where it would be 10 years from now or you know, in the next little while. Or where do you wish? Yeah, where, where I would like it to go, I, I guess, is in a couple of things. Um, what we know now, again, to compare it to 10 years ago, is we have much more evidence about the efficacy of cognitive behavior therapy for a wide range of disorders. Um, still, most of that research is done in uh, English-speaking countries, so the United States, Britain in particular. Uh, you know, but other countries, again, are starting to, to also exhibit lots of research interest. So one of the things I would really like to see would be a lot more, more basic research about the efficacy of CBT or its adaptations, perhaps, for cultural different cultural variations mm -hmm. in different countries. I think that would be a, a huge benefit, both to replicate some of the early work and find out what doesn't work as well, you know, or what needs to change for CBT to be effective in different parts of the world. Um, the other thing that I think is critical as a piece of research and a uh, piece of theory as well, and something we don't know much about, is training. Um, I've become quite interested in the issue about how do we train and think about training for CBT, uh, both in terms of adherence to the model and then in terms of confidence. You and I were involved in a session this morning mm -hmm. looking at this issue, and I think we don't yet have very good models for dissemination of psychotherapy in general, uh, but CBT as well. Mm -hmm. So that's an area I would love to see developed, and I'd like to see some kind of movement towards international um, s standards and models of training both for adherence and for confidence. Thank you very much for your time, for your attention to the 6th Congress of Mind, Behavior and Emotion. Thank you very much. And, and I wish you all well.